Hi guys, I'm GKCS and we are talking about prime number sieves today. So a prime number sieve is like a typical sieve. When you are done processing with this, whatever you have remaining is what you want. So over here you will be remaining with prime numbers. And our task is to take numbers from 1 to n, for us n over here is 100, and find all the prime numbers within that range. So you see here that all the numbers marked in yellow are prime numbers and the rest are composite. Okay, so let's start. So to find all the numbers in this data structure, we start from 1. And 1 divides everything. So actually taking this as a prime number won't make sense because every prime number is divisible by 1. So we ignore that. So 1 is out of the list. right? 2 is the next number that you need to take. 2 divides all even numbers. So firstly, first thing to notice is that 2 has not been touched yet. So that will be added to your prime number list. Right, 2 is added. And this is your list, current list now. Okay. And then 2 is marked as touched. And now you start jumping at lengths of 2. Because you can multiply uh, 2 by a certain number and reach other numbers, which means that those numbers are composite. Okay, so we have 4, 6, 8, 10, all these numbers marked as not prime. 11, not really. 12, yes. 14, yes. 15, we don't know. 16, yes. And so on and so forth. So we mark all the numbers, even numbers as prime, which is 15 numbers, approximately. Now, once you are done with this entire marking, which is up to 100, 98, so on and so forth, so you reach 100 finally, and then you realize, okay, we have run out of numbers in our range, so we go for the next number, which is 3. 3 has not been touched, that's nice. So 3 is a prime because no one till this point was able to touch 3 which means it cannot be touched by any number apart from 1 which means it is prime. Okay, It has no other devices apart from 1. So 3 is now marked and we start making jumps of 3 now. So 5 we don't know, 6 yes we should touch it but it's already been touched by 2. So doesn't really matter, we could again mark it as false, doesn't really matter. 9 will now be marked as not prime and then 12 again it has already been touched uh, 15 is marked as not prime now and so on and so forth till you reach finally 99 yeah because 33 into 3 was 99 so we made that jump here and what does that, what does that do? it marks about n by 6 numbers as prime this marked about n by 2 numbers and why is this n by 6? because you should have marked n by 3 but instead, half of them were already marked. So you marked n by 6. Half of them. So this is a n by 6 approximately. The next number is 4. But do we need to make those jumps of 4? No. Because 4 has already been marked. Meaning that it has a divisor which has marked itself. So if there is any number divisible by 4, it is definitely divisible by the divisor which has marked 4. So that divisor would have marked the other numbers which 4 is going to mark. So you don't need to take care of those. Alright? Fine. So 4 doesn't have any jumps. 5 has not been marked. It's added to your prime list. And then you start again making those jumps. So 10 has already been marked. 15 has been marked. 20 is not. So it's marked. And so on and so forth. Until what? Until i is greater than or equal to root 10. In fact, not equal to i, until i is greater than root 10. And why is that? Well, because if you have a number i, which is prime and greater than root 10, then the only numbers that you need to mark now are i into 2, but that's already been marked. That's marked by 2. So maybe i into 3. But 3 is also marked because 3 marked it before i, which because i is greater than root 10. So 3 will be marked. Uh, i into 5 will be marked, i into 7 will be marked, all these numbers will be marked already. So the only number that you can start from is actually root 10. Because i is greater than root 10. So in fact you have j equal to j is greater than root 10. So let's take that as root 10. This will be less than or equal to n. So that gives you i is less than or equal to n by root 10. 
which gives you i is less than or equal to n and you have a contradiction this is not matching up with what you want so you only process for all i which is less than or equal to root n and what have i done here <laughs> this is root n okay so this is the condition uh, at which you go on making those jumps from all prime numbers that you find okay and there's uh, a lot of optimizations that you can make here for example you don't need to go uh, at jumps of 2 3 4 and so on and so forth you can directly start from i square and we'll see in the code how that can be done but importantly uh, this this prime number ceiling method dramatically reduces the time complexity of for finding out the prime numbers because the brute force is n root n n complexity and we bring this down to approximately n log n using a few optimizations but yeah it can be done quite reasonably so now that we have a technique to find out all prime numbers in a given range 1 to n let's see how we can find out the prime factors nothing special really because if you are at 2 to find out the prime factors of every number divisible by 2 you need to go to that number which is basically make a jump of 2 and go on dividing that number till it is divisible by 2 okay so let's say these are the values and indexes are separate so you have an array from 1 to 100 which are the values over here initially all values are equal to the index values but then you start so you go to 2 you see that 2 is divisible by nothing else apart from 2 so you mark it as prime but now you are also going to be counting factors so Here's what we'll do. You take two, okay, and you divide by two. So that gives you the prime factorization of two as two raised to the power one. Now you make the jump of two. You jump all the way here. Four. Four is divided divisible by two. So four is two raised to the power one into who knows what. So you divide four by two first. This becomes two. Now is it divisible by two even now? Yes. So you divide it again by two. This becomes one, and this becomes two raised to the power two. So essentially, the prime factorization of four is equal to two raised to the power two. And when you go to six, you will see prime factorization of six is two raised to the power one into who knows. So six divided by two becomes three. Right. Uh, so, at every index, we are keeping an array of prime factors, which is two, three, six, so on, two, three, five, seven, so on and so forth. And we are also keeping an array of frequencies, which is what is the frequency of two in the prime factorization. So for so for uh, index two, these values will be. pf is equal to 2 and frequency is equal to 1 at 49 let's say pf is equal to 7 and frequency is equal to 2 similarly at 98 pf is equal to 2,7 and frequencies is equal to 98 by the way so this is 1,2 so you can see that the frequencies can be stored quite easily uh, if you follow this method So what we are doing is jumping to a particular number, marking it as touched, so that you know we jump from a particular number. So this is composite, definitely, and we are also going to be uh, updating its prime factorization based on how many times it is divisible by that particular prime number from which you just jumped. Okay, so the code for this is over here. So this is the code, and it's purposely not written very clearly, so that there might be mistakes and you'll never catch it. Uh, but it it will work. Don't worry. <laughs> uh, you have this. out of loop which goes from 2 to root n uh, that's that's basically the i is that we were talking about right i is going from 2 to root n we also have in case i is not touched that means that it is prime so when you are traversing from the outer loop and you come to a position which has not been touched yet that means it is prime so you mark it as prime you add it to the prime list you also mark it as touched now although it doesn't really matter and then you add it to the factors uh, of that particular number So i now has the factor of itself. Okay, it is divisible by itself. 
This part is very easy because it's for a prime number. Now you need to mark all the composite numbers as not prime. So that's what we do. We take another counter j, which is going to be making the jumps of this. This is the inner loop, which is uh, making jumps of two or jumps of three and so on and so forth. All right? The outer loop is going at speed of one. So at the inner loop, you initialize j equal to two into i, because everything after this, everything which is a multiple of this, has to be not prime. And j should be less than equal to n, of course, because you can't go out of range. Uh, and here you have j equal to j plus i. Why? Because every multiple of j will then be considered. Because uh, j plus i will become 3i. j plus i again will become 4i. And so on and so forth. 5i, 6i. And that will be cancelling out all the composite numbers that j can make. Okay? Why is that? Because j plus i after 2i will be 3i. And then if you add i again to it, it will be 4i. So that is the inner loop making jumps of multiples of i. So everything divisible by i will be now marked. So we get, we mark touched of j as true for all these numbers. And why a of j, this is important because you have one thing which is the index j and i, but you also have values in them, which is initially equal to the index of that number. So one has value one, two has value two. So let's take the case of 54. 54, comes over here. Initially, 2 marks 54 as not prime. But when it does that, it also goes into this inner loop. It sees that so uh, 2 into 27 will come up at some point because that is less than equal to n. So once you come there, you mark it as not prime. You see if 54, a of j, initially is 54. So a of j mod 2 is 0. This is 54 mod 2 is 0. So 54 divided by 2 gives you 0. This condition is satisfied. You go inside. You see that the factors of 54 have now added 2 as a factor. So this is 54. It has prime factors of 2 now. And frequencies of 54. This is the prime list of 54. This is the frequency list of 54. And this has 1 as the count of prime factorization with 2. At this point, 54, this value over here has become 27 because we divided it by 2. So you come to this while loop again, you see that 27 is not divisible by 2 anymore. So you break from the loop and you are, you know, you, you process the rest of the array. But we are interested only in this number. The next number to come along is 3. 3 comes over here, sees that 54 is divisible by 3. So that's nice. You know, we came to this point, 54 is divisible by 3. That means that we can add the factors as 3 over here. So we add it to the prime list. And we also add to the frequency list of 1. So 3 has frequency 1. And this number is divided by 3, so this becomes 9. What now? We are not done with the while loop, uh, while loop yet because we haven't broken out of it. We come back, we see that is 9 divisible by 3? Yes, it is. So, what do we do? We are saying that we are adding to the factors. But whenever you are adding, you are going to be checking if it already exists. If it already exists, there is no point adding it again. You just increment the frequency of it. So, 3 now has frequency 2. And after dividing by 3 over here on this statement, you get 3. Again, the while loop goes through. Uh, 3 is divisible by 3. So you add, but you see that it already exists, so you just increment the frequency. And over here you again divide to get 1. Is 1 divisible by 3? No. Alright, that's fine. We move on. We move on to 57, and so on and so forth. So you see that we can, using this technique, get the prime factorization of a number, and also get the powers that those prime factors will be raised by. So we basically have, at the end, 54 is equal to 2 raised to the power 1 into 3 raised to the power 3 and this is just for one number so we can get it for all numbers now right and time complexity is still n log n or to be precise it's n log n into log of log n 
Okay, but this is also reasonable. Now comes an interesting question. You have a range of numbers from A to B, which is of size 20. Okay, that range is of size 20. And B is quite large. So if you try your old approach to find all primes between 1 to B, it's going to take a lot of time. Right? Like the complexity that we said, n log n into log log n. So we can't afford this, but using a special trick, we can find all the primes in this range, as long as the range is of small size. Okay, so the first thing we need to notice here is that this is very similar to what we did earlier. We can remove all those composite numbers which are divisible by 2. Okay, so let's do that. 3, 1, 2, 3, 1, 4, 3, 1, 6, and so on and so forth, up to 3.30 will be removed. Using the same technique, we start from here, we see if it is divisible by 2. If it is, then we start marking from here. But is this prime? No, it isn't. Okay, 2 is dividing this number, so it is not prime, of course. What else can we do? We can go with 3. 3 divides 3, 1, 2, which is already marked by 2, so fine. It also touches 3, 1, 5, so this will be marked and 318 and so on and so forth up to 330. So now we marked some more numbers just like we were doing in the old sieve. All the way up to what point? We divide by 2, we divide by 3. Now up to what point should we go? Root B. Just like we were going for root n. Okay, what does this tell us? It's marking all composite numbers in that given range. Why? Because you have a range up to b. You know that there are no primes greater than root b. Okay, there are no prime numbers greater than root b in this range. So you are taking all those prime numbers less than or equal to root b and marking that given range by those prime numbers. Any number which is not marked by those prime numbers is bound to be prime. So uh, that's it. That's exactly what you are doing. So you have a minus b divided by 2, these are the computations you are doing for 2 plus a, a to b okay, we will take this range a to b divided by 3 plus a to b divided by 5 and so on and so forth so the time complexity comes out to be approximately a to b log b into log of log of b alright, this is the time complexity of finding out all prime numbers in the range a to b except that we haven't taken the complexity required to find out these root b primes not root b primes exactly but all prime numbers less than root b okay so for that we need to use our simple prime number c from 1 to n but of course we are finding out all prime numbers between 1 to root b now as over here so that's what we are doing we are going to be finding this number range from 1 to b, all prime numbers and then we are going to be testing this range using those prime numbers that we found to get our final answer, to get our final prime numbers in that range okay you can also use the very same technique to find out all the factors of these numbers because you have the primes with you all the primes less than all the prime numbers i less than root b that means that you can also do prime factorization of any of these numbers, just like we were earlier. So we start from 2, we come to 3, 1, 2, we make it, what, 1, 1, 5, 6. And then we set prime of 3, 1, 2 as 2, one of its factors. And the frequencies are 1. So currently there's just one factor we have. And then 1, 5, 6 will again be divided by 2, so frequency of 2 goes up. And this becomes 78 and now my mathematical skills will be tested because this becomes 37 and 37 itself is prime so later on when 37 comes up uh, as one of the prime factors less than root b you will add that to the prime list and set its frequency to 1 right so just the old technique except that we are finding out prime factors for any given range from a to b now and the time complexity is very similar so finding out the first root b prime factors will take you uh, root b into log of 
root b into log of log of root b all right so that is reasonable because these factors are small and root b is quite large usually uh, now if root b is 10 is to power 12 let's say like in the recent code chef question then this will be root no uh, this is equal to b and root b then is 10 is to power 6 log of root b is log of this which is log to the base 2 is around 20 for this and log of log of this which is log of this is approximately 4 but we will be generous and give it 5 so this becomes 100 and this becomes 10 raised to the power 8 which is 1 second of computations on a reasonable processor alright and for every range if your range is 10 raised to the power 5 so a, a to b has a range of 10 raised to the power 5 that in turn gives you d into log of root b into log of log of root b so if d is reasonable if d is less than root b then you're safe so that's it for prime number saving uh, i'll be adding the code for this because it's relatively simple but if you want to contribute of course you're welcome to do so uh, if you have any suggestions or doubts please leave them in the comments below